What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell and in today's video we cover potentially one of the most underrated and unknown opening options out there for white with the Nozzle Wasp Gambit. Shout out to my guy Andre for recommending it. And it's really for you E4 players trying to find a response against this move of B6 with the Owens defense. Here black trying to fee and shadow their light squared bishop and put pressure on our center without yet using one of their central pawns. And the Owens defense is surprisingly hard to go against. I mean if we just go into the mainline theory of d4 oftentimes black is much more comfortable in those lines than we are i've gotten to the point personally where i'm just like look i'm gonna play d3 knight d2 knight f3 and transpose into a king's indian attack type game but there is another option here for white and that is d4 like usual but now playing the almost inaccurate looking move of bishop g5 when i first saw this move from dre i was going gosh what on earth is this bishop trying to do and on top of that this bishop can simply capture off our pawn on e4 where we're really bringing our bishop to g5 to make this game harder for black in terms of development almost every single time that black goes with the owens defense they're trying to play this move of e6 followed by an eventual d5 or c5 but notice that e6 here simply cannot be played unless of course they want to lose their queen on d8 and on top of that this bishop on g5 is just making this a harder presence for black to have to deal with if black ever plays a move like knight f6 we can play e5 kicking that knight around and we're going to have an active game so this bishop is hard to get rid of and we're going to cover later on in this video what happens if black tries ideas like h6 followed by g5 but let's first answer the obvious question what happens if black just goes okay i'm just going to take your pawn on e4 well now we have a very unique idea to the nozzle wasp gambit something that i haven't seen often and that is this move of d5 by doing this we're luring this bishop out to the center of the board and now by playing this central push we're really making these light scores weak especially if we ever see a move here from black like d6 which would really weaken c6 as well as d7 and notice d6 could easily be played by black as e6 here again simply runs into bishop takes the queen on d8 and here our whole idea here is that we're going to rapidly develop our pieces as quickly as possible i mean if we see a move like knight f6 we can actually just continue with knight c3 notice that we're threatening to capture this knight off and then win this bishop on e4 as the knight currently defends it and a move like e6 doesn't work because we can just take this bishop off the board right away and we're simply up a piece for a pawn so y'all e6 runs into knight takes e4 and on top of that we always get that bishop takes f6 followed by knight takes bishop idea so really there's only two moves here that gives black a not completely losing position and those two moves are bishop f5 and bishop g6 both of which getting that bishop out of the way i believe that bishop g6 is the more accurate option this bishop is just a little more comfortable less of a target and on top of that it's not like this bishop on f5 is doing anything more than the bishop on g6 is currently doing but guys now against this move bishop g6 we've got this bishop to the king side of the board let's now go after it with h4 and notice what we're threatening if we see a move here like c6 black just trying to undermine our center we're going to continue now with h5 continuing to expand on the king side of the board whole idea being if black tries to hang on to their bishop we can now snatch this knight off facing a move like e takes f6 is simply going to run into queen f3 whole idea being if bishop takes c2 we have rook c1 and this bishop is going to be trapped if black goes into that e takes f6 line and if g takes f6 we can actually just continue g4 and notice how this bishop simply has nowhere to go we're currently attacking all of the squares that it can currently move and we're simply about to go up material and development so y'all if we see a move here like bishop f5 we're going to capture on f6 and this bishop one way or another is going to get trapped so here black really needs to play a move like just snatching this pawn off the board but even then okay we're going to get two minor pieces in return we're still technically down a point in material as black here has got one of our rooks and two pawns and we've got two minor pieces but we do have two minor pieces and on top of that talk about an advantage in development and attacking chances here we have a ton of pressure on black and the best move here is actually g6 but even then we can drop our queen back to h2 we would love to get our queen to e5 here attacking the rook and having vision on this king on e8 with knight e4 ideas in the air so here black really needs to play a move like bishop g7 preventing queen e5 but even then we can play a move here like d6 which does two things first off it's going to be very hard for black to now develop their queen side pieces this knight is not going anywhere anytime soon and because of that neither is the rook on a8 this queen's future isn't looking too bright and we're also putting a ton of pressure 
on this pawn of e7. Again, we have the edge here. We have space. We have activity. Meanwhile, black only has one piece that has left the eighth rank. And I myself here, I'm taking white any day of the week. So y'all, this h4 idea is really dangerous playing h5. Whether black decides to take on h5 or end up getting their bishop trapped with a move like bishop f5, in either case, we're going to have ourselves a very fun game going forward. Black needs to play this move of h6. Whole idea being that they're attacking our bishop, and they're also giving their bishop a little bit of breathing room on h7. Now, we can't trap this bishop, but we can just continue by snatching off this knight and then playing h5 anyways. Sure, this doesn't trap the bishop, but it does give us space, so why not take it? We can now continue with a move like bishop g3, putting pressure on that minor piece. Notice, by the way, if we do take on h7, this orc's going to have to capture back, and black's not going to be able to castle kingside, which is going to be a big, big loss going forward. And here, if we see a move like bishop takes d3, okay, we capture back with tempo and with development. And there's only been a couple of games on Lee Chess that have reached this position, both of which very high ratings on both sides. Both of the games actually resulted in this move of bishop e7, but now white can just continue with castle and queenside. And notice now, again, it's very hard for black to develop here. This knight can't really develop to c6 because we'll just capture it off as well as a square of a6 because our queen simply attacks that square. And if we ever see a move like d6 here, notice again just how much weaker these light squares are looking. We can actually now try to put our g knight eventually on this square of d4 and attack some of those key squares. We can start this off with either knight f3 or knight g e2. It doesn't really matter which one you go with first. If a move like castling kingside, we can start to just push our pawns down the king side of the board and really try to get a stronger grip on those squares and then soon bring our knight to d4. Notice how active this knight on d4 is, attacking a ton of very weak light squares and this position is a nightmare for black to have to deal with. So y'all following this move of bishop takes e4, in which case we play the move of d5, we just covered a move like knight f6, which attempts to put some pressure on d5. How else can black put pressure on the pawn? Again, e6 does not work. This move of c6 is a good option for black, but against this, we're now going to continue with c4. Whole idea being, hey, you want to take on d5, we'll simply capture back. And as always, we got those knight c3 ideas ready to go, just as before. And here, if a move like d6, trying to somehow lock this game up, notice that we simply have queen a4 with check. And the very next move, we capture off this bishop. There's a lot of opening traps that black can fall into here. So guys, going back to this original move of bishop g5 with the Nalza Wasp Gambit, black can take this pawn on e4, but let's first cover a couple of other different options Black has, including h6 followed by bishop takes e4, as well as h6 and g5, and then taking the pawn on e4. A lot of these moves are interchangeable, but needless to say, hopefully you'll get the concepts and ideas. Let's say Black starts off with the move of h6. We're simply going to drop this bishop back to h4, and as always, if Black wants to now take the pawn, on e4, we're simply going to continue with d5. As always, if a move like knight f6, we get knight c3 kicking this bishop to the king side of the board. And now as white, we can simply rapidly develop our pieces. We got options like knight f3 and bishop d3 as well. We got some pressure on this knight on f6. And if a move like d6, this c6 square is going to be extremely weak. And it's going to be hard for black to get this knight out of b8 without playing d6. Here white with the big, big edge. See, so if black plays h6 and then captures the pawn on e4, it doesn't really change a ton our approach to the rest of the game. But what about this move of g5? This really does make things interesting, kicking our bishop back to g3. And now following bishop takes e4, I personally don't find that d5 packs the same punch because our bishop is not on h4, attacking key squares like f6 and e7. But we could continue with ideas like knight c3, attacking the bishop, or simply h4. Notice how far black has extended their kingside pawns, which is really making this king a little bit more vulnerable. However, I personally really like this idea of bishop e5. This is the fun line attacking the rook on h8. And notice just how many traps black can fall into here. First off, if a move like f6, we simply play queen h5 with check, and this game is about to be over on move 8. So f6 obviously doesn't work, as this king is far too exposed. What about a move here such as knight to f6? Well, in this case, many may be tempted to play a move like bishop takes f6 and then play queen e2, trying to pin the bishop to the king on e8. But notice now, black can simply play queen e7, getting rid of the pin, and it's now black with the edge. So if we see this move of knight f6, we're not going to take immediately and then play queen e2. We're actually going to play queen e2 first. 
Holidia being that obviously we're threatening now to just take this knight on f6 and then win the bishop. Black's just not going to have enough time to take on f6 and then get this queen on e7 in only one move. And on top of that, if this bishop moves to a square like b7, we simply capture this knight off and this bishop is not going to be able to be captured as this pawn on e7 will be pinned to the king on e8. And notice as well, if a move here like d5, we can now just continue with f3, giving Black the option, okay, do you want to lose your bishop on e4, or do you want to save your bishop, and yet again, lose your knight on f6, here Black in big, big trouble. So all that to say, guys, when we do play this option of bishop e5, when Black throws their pawns down the king's side of the board, here Black really needs to play the move of rook h7. f6 and knight f6 simply do not work, but even rook h7 gives us a very fun game following knight c3 attacking this bishop. Notice again, black can play a move like bishop e7. This is a very easy move to play, but now we have queen d3. We didn't move our bishop here because we don't want to lose our pawn on g2, which is currently being defended. But by moving our queen here, this rook simply cannot be saved. I mean, if black plays a move like knight f6 trying to defend it, okay, let's just remove the defender. Here, black's really smart to play a move like rook g7, so at least they get something out of the deal. But even then, we're now up material. We play a move like h4 trying to break open the king side, and here white potentially not far off from getting a very easy win. So going back to this position, y'all, we play bishop e5, in which case black has to play this move of rook h7 and we now play knight c3 in which case black is smart to play a move like bishop g6 so that ideas like queen d3 are not available simply trapping that rook on h7 but even then let's now continue with a move like h4 expanding on the king side as always we got those h5 followed by g4 ideas trying to get this bishop off of this key diagonal so that we can trap this rook on h7 and here black captures on h4 okay let's play knight f3 snatch that pawn off and here white with a ton of activity and initiative and really this is just one of the most awkward positions i've ever seen in opening theory for the black side i mean none of these central pawns have even moved neither have the flank pawns on c7 or f7 somehow this bishop got all the way over to g6 we have a rook on h7 and now as white, we have a ton of attacking ideas. One of them is playing a move like knight takes g6, followed by queen g4. Castling queenside is going to be one move away. And this bishop on f1 is going to be very easily activated as well. Here white with the big edge. So y'all going back to this idea, if black wants to play h6 and g5, kicking our bishop back to g3 and then capture on e4, sure. Our bishop is no longer attacking key squares like f6 or e7, but we are able to just play bishop e5 and really force this rook h7 move, forcing black into a very awkward and defensive game. What happens, however, if black decides not to capture the pawn on e4 and now just continues with the move like bishop g7? Well, I still think that it's white with the edge here as we can play knight c3 and we have a very nice center and black with somewhat overextended pawns on the king side of the board. Actually, we're just going to go after these targets right away. I mean, if black plays a move like e6, let's now play h4 putting some pressure on g5, and notice now it's very hard for black to develop. I mean, if a move like knight f6, we can now play e5. This is very normal for the Owens defense trying to play bishop b7 and knight f6 putting pressure on e4, but in this case, this knight is just going to get kicked around. If we see a move like knight e4, we can now just continue with knight ge2, whole idea being we'd like to just capture off this knight and replace the knight on c3 with our knight currently on the e-file. And here, if black takes on g3, and then snatches off the pawn on h4. Sure, they are up a pawn, but we now have knight h5 and talk about an active knight that really isn't going anywhere anytime soon, attacking the bishop, attacking the key square of f6. And here, again, the Nazawas gambit giving white great attacking chances against the Owens defense. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to learn the delayed wing gambit against the Sicilian defense, very underrated option, click that video to the left. If you'd like to learn the ready gambit, my personal favorite opening against the French defense, click that video to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.